All right. <laughs> this is random, but trying to figure out what uh, this or these bugs are that uh, only hit my strawberry plants outside. So here they are. Without further ado, what's up? So, I mean, this looks like it's just the skeletons. There are also some aphids. If I can. Oh, I think I just saw an aphid. Oh, yeah. But these guys are dead, too. Flora Nugs. What's up? So, obviously, what's weird is they're all dead. And, uh,. But like these white ones, they're just, it almost looks like something molted and, or something else just destroyed all of them. But are there thrips, new flea, uh, I mean, all right. Oh, there's a live one. That's obviously an aphid, but. Okay, so the white ones are thrips. Oh yeah, you know what? I actually see an eyeball right there. Hold on. What's interesting is they're only hitting the strawberry plants, which are like super healthy. Um, if I had a picture, I would... All right, let me zoom in. That's two times, three times. All right, let's get you back into focus, out of focus. Whoa. Look at those trichomes on the strawberry plants. What? Russets? No. Alright, this guy, when we get him in focus. Focus, 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 rawhide. Okay. So, new flea, you're saying that is a thrip. What's interesting is why they're all dead. And is that just like a dried up, like do you think something sucked all the goodness out of them? Let me just look up thrip. gonna do this by myself but white thrips sorry white thrip 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 ah. I don't know okay so you think they just all died yeah, strawberry hash for those trichomes. And pour some strawberry juice in. So let's go. Let me see if I can find some other ones. Oh, wow. Look at those guys. Look at that. Thrips and aphids living happily together. Yeah, yeah, no, obviously those are definitely aphids, but uh, but anyway, I should get some music going and <laughs> just look at bugs with some old school dub. Oh, that's already at four time, huh? Okay, it's a pretty cool close up, though. I want to get a better. I mean, it's a pretty good camera, but... I wish these things weren't so... They have super shallow depth of fields, like microscopes, and I wish they had... Where do we want to zoom? Look at you. Let's 
Okay, your beady red eyes, your beady brown eyes. Okay, so anyway, we know that that's an aphid. And evidently, where are the thrips? So I actually just reached out to Arbico for some uh, yellow sticky traps. That's a leg. All right, so this guy is clearly just, I mean, that's about as skeleton-y as, so do they just not live a long time? Yeah, but see how shallow the depth of field is? All right, let me try to get it up. So we'll get one of our IPM experts on the, cause it's always interesting that these things, you know, I have, I think five pots with strawberries and they're only on the strawberry leaves. And I have all sorts of other stuff growing outside. Then I have these, uh, I forget what we identified them as, but those like waxy uh, bugs that were just on the uh, mustard greens. And I just find it interesting that they all only kind of like they have preferred plants and will completely ignore everything else. All right, we'll get you, but again, just, I mean, Like every leaf has these things on it and in the same state of just complete deadness. The Tacmali Wi-Fi microscope. All right, Tacmali, Tacmali Wi-Fi digital microscope. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I don't have any other microscopes to compare this to, so I don't know if it's like a good one or micro white bugs in most cocoa medium. Yeah, John is, thrips look for sugar plants. Uh, yeah. Well, no, I mean, th this is just all, I mean, I have, <laughs> there, there's, uh, the weed is grown elsewhere. Uh, but like in my raised beds, I have daikon, I have cauliflower, I have uh, chard, I have lettuce, I have tomatoes, strawberries. Uh, yeah, that's true, it's good enough. But I mean, I wanna get cool. Oh, there's a. So anyone have an idea why they're all dead then? Because I'm in SoCal and it's been just like nice and warm. So I'm wondering why none of these are living. That would be my next question, like why they all die. One bug that acts like ladybug. Lacewing? Yes, stoner dude, thank you for the... <laughs> The pro insight, that is a dead bug. So anyway, that's about all I have in my, <laughs> so what's going on in my garden right now? Uh, who's, who's long leg is that? Just looks like a leg or something. Let's see who else is. Yeah, there's another one. Okay, so the, The vote is that these are all thrips. And they like their high bricks. Well, no, I guess, I mean, my, I, I would guess my strawberries have a high bricks level. Comfortably numb, you're saying the thrips like the heated water, right? It's a beetle. 
actually back out a little bit. That's three, two. <laughs> it's like it's like a a battlefield full of dead. I mean, actually, the only thing I really sprayed this with was some uh, calcium, and then a. Uh, the bio ag no 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 thank I yeah bio ag cyto plus which is uh <laughs> which is that thing so I did a foliar with, I mean, I don't, this definitely isn't what killed them, but I did a uh, foliar of vinegar, eggshell calcium, the uh, water soluble calcium, and then this stuff, which I also did as a foliar. This is seaweed, micronutrients, humic. I mean, I feel like these things are, you know, it's not like I'm growing strawberries at any sort of commercial scale. So I just kind of, I've been hitting them with water, just spraying them with a the hose every morning. I mean, the plant, the strawberries look good and the leaves all look super green and healthy. This is the, uh, rips. So anyway, that's, uh. No, I'm not using Fox Farm at home. That was just, that was just in that one video at Tom's house because we had we had no other options. Yeah, sulfur kills everything. Diatomaceous earth. Yeah, actually, so mostly in, in these beds, it's all pit moss and uh, compost from my uh, compost bins. Uh, do strawberries, I don't think so. I feel like the strawberries are just a couple times a year they, they the fruit actually comes out. So I think they're like a multiple time per year fruiter. I mean, obviously right now we're in winter, but then they also fruit in the summer. Let's see something more interesting. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I think I've shown everything on this leaf. There's not really much else. There's another dead one. No. We see the, that looks like the antenna, the body. Yeah, I'm sure Fox Farm's fine. Uh, I, I I would rather just have something that almost has nothing in it and build it up myself. Um, Scott, uh, Scott Spot Fox Farm. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been used like I use the uh, Royal Gold uh, Super, which is super light on any sort of amendments. Um, so anyway, <laughs> that's about all I got. Zoom back out a little bit. Yeah, actually that's more of the, the battlefield view.
So anywho. Alright, I am going to go pack seeds up. <laughs> and then it's on to Valentine's dinner. Yeah, so actually one of the things I was talking to Leighton about was uh, I want to try Delano's um, palm fronds. So he was saying that palm trees have tons of uh, viruses and all sorts of other bad stuff. And so my question to him was, well, couldn't I heat the palm fronds for a certain period of time at a certain temperature? Uh, this is an Amscope, uh, Amscope, uh, Amscope USB, let's see. Uh, Amscope, hold on, four time, there we go. Not seeing it in my Google search. Aha, uh -huh. it's an HDMI. It's an Amscope. Tw yeah, here we go. It is this one. Yeah, no, Chad, that, that's, I'm definitely having the IPM experts, uh, that's why I wanted to film this, and I was like, I might as well go live and see what other people think. Uh, but the microscope is an M scope. It's that one. Yeah, and there are the, the happy aphids. So anyway, uh, well, I just put, um, um, hold on, you know, I am putting up a whole bunch of weed should taste good seeds, uh, and then a bunch of, uh, uh, Guardian of the Lost Terps, which is Russian Land Race Bureau, uh, which are all kind of um, wild ruderalis. Yeah, no, they're all definitely, well, except for the, uh, the aphids, but the uh, thrips are definitely dead. Um, and then I got to put up all this stuff, which is... Uh, Free thinkers, Cam. <laughs> as fast as I can do data entry, once I can train my six year old to do data entry. Yeah, the weed should, I'm psyched to try some of uh, Miles' stuff. And, and it's interesting because he has some stuff that's, uh, uh, I will reach out to Jackson. Um, whoa. I am in Southern California, Los Angeles. Uh, oh, what's the site? Sorry. It is that site right there. So anyway. All right. Well, stay tuned for the next pest in the garden. <laughs> um, Marion, uh, I don't remember. Are we cool with whatever we got? Did I send it or did James send it? Yeah, no, I, I need, I'm going to make, well, so with these ones, I don't know if I want the, uh, that or if I want to do something different, but I may just run them and then I have, uh, 
Oh, I don't have any of the other ones down here, but there's some other t-shirts, but I, I, I need to print them and put them on the site. Uh, oh, James did. Okay. <laughs> so get mad at him. Take it up with him. Yeah, usually I get blamed when people are like, and I'm going to give something away, and then they don't send it. So anyway, I bet whatever he did send you is probably pretty good. Ah, the TKO is good. And the jelly beans. Yeah, the, you can't go wrong. So... You just gotta win another one and be like, James, don't fuck it up this time. Send me the right shit. But, uh... Final Cut Pro, what about Final Cut Pro? I do use Final Cut. Um, ground beetles are overlooked with pest control. Meaning people don't take them seriously as pests. I don't really see be a lot of beetles out on the West Coast, but when I was growing up in New England, they, uh, I mean, every summer we had the beetle traps out, so. Uh, top floor, isn't it like the middle of the night where you are? Oh no, you're only, uh, eight. I think you're eight hours ahead, so it's like, oh, I guess it's midnight. Am I right? Is it midnight right now? Uh, okay. I'm sure I can... <laughs> I'm sure I can find some recent mites. Uh, okay. Alright, it's not that late. Well, hope your Valentine's Day was amazing. And, uh, I'm going to call it a day. Uh, so tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. with, uh, Tad from Kiss Organics and Nelson and, uh, ba -ba -ba, David from, so David, uh, the Green Organic Dutchman, let me, tgod.ca, actually let me throw up his, uh, their Instagram, or tgod.ca, but they're supposedly the biggest, uh, okay, it's making me verify my age, remember me for 30 days, oh, one, oh, one. Zero posts. Okay, that's not helpful. Uh, anyway, that's... Uh, thank you, Hugh. I appreciate that. Callie O was flying... To, uh, uh, yes, oh, no. <laughs> yes, if we're talking military time, 0900. Okay, Riley, let us work around your work schedule, your life schedule. What I like is all I got to do is go into the garage and, <laughs> and open up my computer. But anyway, uh, don't be tricked into thinking something that... Yes, I think everybody... So actually, some of the wheat should taste good stuff is, uh, you know, it's it's hemp level, hemp level uh, THC, and I kind of want to just grow it out and try it. Um, 
which I think would be interesting. So yeah, he, he, he sent me a bunch of stuff that's either, you know, below the 0.3% threshold or stuff that's like low, like 10, 15% THC. And then obviously stuff that's uh, higher on the THC uh, spectrum. Uh, stoner dude, I will uh, maybe this week put the shirts up on the uh, on the site. I gotta set the print job in motion with the printer, and then um, yeah, we have. I think Indian Land Race Exchange hopefully coming soon. Um, we have, yeah, some Pacific Northwest routes. Uh, <laughs> this stuff. Why, what did the stoner dude say? No, I said some stuff is low THC. I said there's a, there's a variety of choice on the site. It's like going into a liquor store and seeing everything from uh, 151 to beer, right? I didn't say it was all, yes. Uh, but I got to follow up with them and that and then yeah, there's some interesting stuff coming from India and Pakistan uh, Thank you Riley Yes, Elka. Yeah, now I need to bring Elka on uh, Elka's stuff's actually on the site. I have two uh, Things up there right now the and actually that that's some of what I'm growing right now um, I gotta bring a whole bunch of babies that I popped uh, over to their final home tomorrow, after tomorrow's show. Uh, but yeah, he's into the hazes and skunks, so I'm gonna explore. Uh, I try to check. Duran line? What's the Duran line? Uh, actually, I, there was someone uh, up in Humboldt who I was going to ask if he could send down some uh, uh, black stuff. But uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm babbling and reading the chat. So I will. Let's see what's going on with our... They have not moved. <laughs> There's not a lot of action going on in the aphid front. Let's see who else is. Oh, there's a little orgy. That, that is bad. That is not what you want to see on your plants. Oh, no, sorry. You're talking about something else. Miles! What are you doing here? My God. Yes, Miles, I'm doing some data entry right now. I'm getting it up as fast as my little fingers can make it happen, so... That is, weed should taste good, and I strongly endorse that uh, statement. That company mission statement. Yes, better picks. Actually, you know what? Better uh, the the um, the uh, the like COAs are. It's almost like you took a screenshot on your phone at a tiny image size so if you have bigger pictures of the coas that'd be cool um yes we should taste good is in the house oh my god who's that hold on look at who's coming over yes you go hang out with my friends
as you guys are all going straight into the compost tumbler. So you are, oh, you are very near the end of your lives. Yeah, that one looks young. Oh, lucky you. It's like a, a teenager. This is, uh, it's like Microcosmos. Anyone watch the movie Micro, the uh, documentary Microcosmos? Uh, I'm guessing these ones are aphids, and then the other ones, uh, everyone's voting. These dead carcasses, everyone's voting, are uh, thrips. Let me get them into focus, though. Yeah, torch. I could hit them with a torch. But anyway, this bug video is all that's standing in between me and getting the rest of Miles' gear up on the site. So with that, I, uh, <laughs> I'll just leave this running. Oh, it's, well, no, that, yeah, we know that's not thrips. Uh, I was thinking Bitcoin, uh, I wanted to talk to some of the cryptocurrency payment companies, because I think it'd be cool to, these are what we're talking about is thrips. Cheddar Bob, how are you? Actually, Cheddar Bob, you, <laughs> do you want to give us a quick garden tour? Do you all want to take a peek into Cheddar Bob's garden? Cheddar Bob? If I can find your email. Uh, let us find, aha. Uh -huh. Cheddar Bob? Oh wait, sorry, we lost our little... <laughs> the Bukaki. Alright, Cheddar Bob, check your email. Since I know your lights are on, right? All right, let's see if... <laughs> yes, thank you, Steve. Aha, look at that. Oh my God. All right, let me... And he's wearing a Peach It Tastes Good shirt. Amazing. All right, I'm going to get a beer out of the fridge. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Amazing. All right, let's... Uh, Feedback. The, can, can you flip your phone uh, 90 degrees like a... Uh, yes, look at that. I can. Amazing. How's that? Uh, that is perfect. Let me, uh, all right. So we, we're finally doing what we've talked about doing. I know we've been trying to get together for a few weeks now. I think it's mostly cause like when, when your lights are on is kind of when I'm easing into cooking dinner for my kids. Yeah, I hear that. Finished dinner. So it works out pretty well. But they're, uh, my wife is napping and my, uh, two-year-old is napping and my six-year-old is with her mom so wow how 
how'd you work out of? I know. <laughs> Edibles? <laughs> yeah, I knocked her out. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, should I shift around? Is that okay? Yeah, give us, a little, give us a little impromptu tour. All right, well, um, so I grow in 4x4 four four bed. Uh, the first bed I you, uh, I actually harvested and um, top dressed some cover crop down. Some of Miles is cover crop. Uh, so, I mean, it's nothing... Nothing too significant, but I run the blue nets, uh, so just really kind of starting to get stuff started again. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And then here, uh, this is the longer style. So I have some GMO in here. Um, let's see, these ones right here. And this is a wood cross with tangerine cookie. J J J just quickly, are you wearing uh, Apple earbuds? No, I'm not. Nope. Uh, okay. All right, because it was clipping like like an earbud. But uh, all right. So so basically, you you have two four by fours. Is that correct? Uh, this one back here is a five by five. Ah. And first ten was the uh, is a four by four. The blue ends five. By uh, sorry, all right, sorry, I'm not talking tent size. I'm talking raised bed size. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Both beds are four by fours. Okay, and, and then in the one over your right, the one you're looking at right now, how many plants do you have in that one four by four? Just three plants. Okay. Yeah, uh, let me see if I can turn them around. Uh, I don't think, maybe I can. Nope. What? I okay. know, oh, yeah, you, you can. If you, um... If you hit that camera mic sprocket, and then you can pick which camera you use. And we'll linger on me so the whole world doesn't have to watch you uh, poking at your... <laughs> do, do you see the... Uh... Yeah, I got it. Yeah, there we are. Right, nice. Look at that. Now you're unstoppable. There we go. Much more comfortable now. You don't have to. Look. So okay, but but you're you're popping seeds. So so are you planting in here and then pulling males, or do you plant somewhere else and then once you know what's male and female, you put them in their final home, or what's the strategy? So I pop from seed, uh, and then I just let them grow until they sex themselves, and then I, I into here. Um, I usually make my own paper pots out of like a, a little. Basically, it's a mold like this uh, that has like a stamp on the bottom, and then I'll transplant those in there if they get too large, uh, like if I let them veg out too big. Uh, sometimes I'll take a clone from something that I've grown, uh, put them in a solo cup, and transplant them into here, which is what I did with these ones. Because these these came from outdoors in my uh, my raised bed from outdoors. So just quickly, Miles asked uh, if you're on week six. Uh, it's actually going to week nine. So the GMO's kind of starting to wrap up. And uh, I think the, the first time I grew this Wookiees, it went like 11 and a half weeks. Uh, but it's starting to it's starting to fade out right now, so I might uh, be able to harvest it a little bit earlier, which is nice. But the uh, the GMO is an eleven week finish. Okay. And then everything's grown under a five hundred watt uh, ceramic metal halide. Get a little UVB supplement, Folicure. And then this is a support trellis, but I didn't need it. Uh, I didn't get the stretch that I was anticipating. So. And then, ah, there's the avocado. Yeah. And what kind of worms do you have in there? Uh, started off with red wrigglers and European uh, night crawlers. So you have both, okay. Both. And after the, the talk the other day with people on the other show, um, I'm 
thinking about adding some uh, African night crawlers because they they seem to, from the description, be more active and reproduce a little bit faster. It looks good though. Is that Dichondra in there or what is that? Uh, this? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm sort of clover. This is the 12 seed uh, cover crop from Built the Soil in that bed. But I, uh, in the other bed, you know, I dropped some of Miles' uh, cover crop in there. Which I think. It, 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 in the other bed that you just uh, chopped in, right? And I went through, and uh, uh, so most of my blue mats were down deeper. Than so I readjusted those and brought them up a little bit, a little bit more even with the uh, the soil line. But as you can see, I leave my roots right in there. Um, in about seven or ten days, those will be broken down enough so I can just kind of, you know twist it and it'll pop right out but yeah um let's see what else do i got miles said you grow your own avocados uh i'm gonna start after oh got it <laughs> <laughs> so you can tell everyone to fuck off when they give you a hard time yeah yeah i do but this was the harvest off of uh, three plants uh, of the Royal Spill from Emerald Mountain Legacy. Yeah. These hangers are really great. 52 clip hangers. Alex, what takes nine years? Oh, to, for a, for a, oh, sorry. Yeah, avocados. Right, right, right. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> No, I, I, I like kind of, you know, when we watched uh, Aaron, what was that, set yesterday morning? And kind of all the little, like, uh, 3D printing clips and stuff that he has. Yeah, that, those corner clips for the, uh, the smaller <laughs> plant were wicked smart. Yeah, I, I do want to 3D print a, uh, like, a six-pack solo cup uh, holder. Because I have I have knocked over many solo cups. <laughs> uh, the one says Cron Don grows. So what uh what kind of bugs and stuff are you uh do you deal with, like indoor in Maine in soil? Uh to be honest, the only ones that I've really had deal with our thrips and uh so well actually so confirm for me were those thrips on my uh on my uh strawberry leaves um not that not that first one the more bulbous one looked like oh uh, no no no, no. I, i'm talking the uh hold on let me let me bring them up because they haven't moved since they're all dead not those ones uh these little white uh See those ones? I do. Those, I don't know. Those don't really look like dead brit bodies. Their legs look too long. But I, I'm no entomologist, you know. I, I just, yeah, I don't know. Those legs look uh, very large to be brit. Okay. To me. Um, all right. Yeah, those are, those are all I've had to deal with indoors um i tried to grow some ginger one time indoors and uh, i ran across a couple months but those were easily taken care of with some h miles uh, predatory um but the cucumeras those work those work really well um for the grips and i used the tweakment from build this oil as well as a foiler and edge and uh i didn't any signs of them at all through flower and bassiana bavaria i use that as well uh once a week as a soil event so that probably 
<laughs> Miles. <laughs> he said, H Miles, that's my might. <laughs> I think that's that's his porn name, it's H Miles. Yeah. <laughs> um and, and you're training everything, so I do. You... I got this um so I'm a lobsterman by trade. So we have lots of lobster crab wine. Lou actually asked me about it a few years ago, and it, it just stuck with me. I was, I was like, oh, yeah, that's perfect, because the squares are so small. You get a perfect, constant, horizontal growth, rather than having to wait for it to grow up through the, the larger squares and then bend it back. Um, it's just it's a lot easier to do. So, so sorry. Th those are a bunch of uh, like lob, like disassembled lobster trap. Uh... Yep. yep. Uh, so basically, four by four foot section, and you would count out your certain squares. It's actually like twenty three squares across. And then you bend up for one, and then bend up at the other, and then you you have another section that you clip on to each end, and that would basically be lobster. But then you have to, you have to uh, make your heads for the traps and put on rails and put in bricks and put on a door and so there's a lot to, that goes into it. So someone said that aphids molt and those may be the uh, like the as the aphids went from one phase to another the the exoskeleton. I don't know. We'll get. When we have Matthew on, we'll uh, get to the bottom of that. <laughs> have another show on tonight? Uh, I hope not. Uh, my wife would kill me. Uh, no, I, I, I was just outside and I saw uh, all these bugs on my strawberries and so I just randomly went live and then a hundred and something people started watching and I was like, fuck. So. Well, I mean, that's awesome. I think I can speak for everyone on here when I say just as a personal home grower, you see that I, I don't do what all these other guys are doing with these huge grows, you know, but from a small home grower, like what you're doing for all of us with all of the knowledge and all these people you're having on is uh, so appreciated. And I'm pretty sure I speak for everyone on here, you know, um, it's, it's, it's a huge help, and uh, I, I don't think there are words that can explain how we all feel about it, so. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, I'm psyched. I mean, I, I've I've been dying. I mean, <laughs> if uh, my very conservative Chinese in-laws weren't over all the time, I would have tents and stuff set up here where I could... Uh, do stuff from my own, like that, that's kind of why I'm setting up stuff at other people's houses so I can go over and be like, we're live, like, in a, like I have a, uh, in one spot, uh, an eight by four that I'm, a four by eight that I'm setting up, a four by four and a two by four. Um, and, uh, that's actually what I'm starting to build out tomorrow. And then I want to bring like, 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 Leighton lives 45 minutes from there. So, you know, having different people come over, like, you know. You, you're so lucky. You have people, I mean, I know the West Coast is huge, but you, you actually have the availability of people to go and see. Whereas though it's basically just Blue and I on this damn island, you know, like we have to travel forever to go see people that know what they're talking about. Um, <laughs> and you know your show is the like a, the pathway for us um you know that aren't able to to get information easily from people in person so yeah no and it's fun i mean i you know it's like there's not one i i get annoyed when people shit on someone else's way of doing stuff like it's more like oh like that's like that's not what i do but like interesting and, uh, you know, that's kind of why I want to show, like, I love showing, you know, uh, I mean, yesterday it was Aaron who had a, you know, a two by four, right? Uh, 
Yeah. You know, and, and tomorrow is going to be the largest organic grower in all of Canada. Uh, but I love just doing the one-on-one -on -one basement home grows and, you know, someone's growing some dank weed for themselves and they're excited and passionate about what they're growing. So, so what, what are you, and actually one of the other things is like, I'm starting to, you know, like I have all these companies that are, uh, that are sending me stuff and like, I don't use much in the way of, uh of anything, but I'm starting to explore, you know, recharge and Bigfoot mycorrhiza and bioag and, uh, organics alive. And, you know, I, I want to be able to see like, okay, I'm going to use this thing in a small amount on this round and something else or nothing, or just my, you know, compost from my, you know, you know tumbler be, to be honest peter like, like i'm such a lazy grower that i i wish i could pay more attention to that stuff and write that stuff down but that's just not who i am as a person and and certainly not as a grower um like i uh i do use different products and i notice when things don't work and when things do work but i wish i i I, I kept better track of that stuff, but, um, that's the reason I chose to, to go to living soil was because it allows me to be, it really does allow me to be a lazy grower. You know, um, I don't have to do anything to it. And especially with the addition of like the avocado tech that, that blue showed me, I mean, I eat, I have to do even less. And that's for me, that's living soil is perfect. I, I don't have to uh, be on the on the plants schedule, the feeding schedule. It's already there, you know. Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Yeah, no, I, I. Uh, but I mean, even with that, it's like you know, putting in uh, like what's your calcium source? What's your you know, source of this, that, like, uh, kelp, uh, or whatever. And, uh, yeah, Miles said fermented planet. Like, I, so for me, it's just like playing around with stuff and seeing what happens and sharing, but then having someone like you share and having Miles share and having Tyler share and being like, this is, this is the minor tweak I added or Alex, uh, who's also in the chat, uh, <laughs> watermelon tech. Yes. You know, after, after so long, um, I just have a feeling that things have completed, so I'll throw in some oyster shell flour. Um, if, if I've gone through, um, I'll throw in some Epsom salt, and, and this will be in my avocado, you know. I'll throw in Build a Soils 51010 or their uh, 222. Uh, I've been playing around with a whole bunch of things in the last three and a half years with the avocado tech. Um, but I, I don't, um, I guess I just go by feeling, you know what I mean? If that makes any sense. Um, I just kind of read the plants and the soil and the cover crop is pretty important to be able to read. That'll show like your first signs of any sort of issues. But mostly any issues that I've had have had to do with like a runaway blue mat or watering. And I don't, uh, I haven't seen any real deficiencies uh, through the soil. So I just kind of add things here and there. I don't, I'm just kind of like a, a regular manner, you know, a pinch of this, a toss of that. Um, no, no real measurements, just, uh, just kind of... In the summer, are you growing outdoor? I, I'm not a fan of growing outdoor in my area. Um, the, the climate, we have that like fog that always sets in, um, you know, in the morning and in the afternoon, uh, just always very humid. So right where I am, there's always a lot of uh, bud rot and pests and PM. 
but I end up throwing a couple plants outside anyways. And this was the first year that I had a plant that didn't have any bud rot, any insects, any PM the whole way through it finished in early October. And that was the, uh, the Royal spill from that. I, that I just chopped down. And, uh, I had heard people talk about the Royal Kush line being pest resistant and mold resistant. And, uh, I, I found out for myself that how true that is. Like it was the best plant I've grown outdoors in Maine in almost 20 years. And uh, <clears throat> what are you going to put in the empty bed next? Well, I have some uh, Royal Starflower crossed with Royal 7 crossed with LVRK. Um, and I have some Space Kush from Mr. Toad there. And I also have some Sour Maui OG. But I think the Space Kush and the, uh, the Royal Starflower will finish in time. I may run the... Uh, the sour Maui OG indoors in the bed behind me when I, uh, when I harvest these other ones. So, so you see this question, uh, I was thinking of trying blue mats, but now I keep hearing about runaway blue mats. <laughs> How often does that happen? I've only had that happen twice in three and a half years. And I only run a five gallon reservoir. So it doesn't, it's not so overly detrimental if that five gallons runs through my 155 plus gallons of soil. It takes it pretty easily. Um, but I, you will notice, you know, where the blue mat dripped and dripped and dripped and dripped and dripped, uh, that that plant that's in that section will have a little bit harder time. But overall, um, that's why I run the five gallon beds because, I mean, the five gallon reservoir, because it can handle the beds can handle five gallons of water if you know uh it's like blue had a runaway once and he runs like a 14 gallon reservoir or something and he ended up with water coming down through his ceiling and stuff so i i learned my lesson about you know size of reservoir right but yeah only, only one time and they're they're really reliable they're they really are as long as you set them up properly, and that's really the hardest part is, is knowing if they're properly set up. So what I did was I, I basically super soaked my soil uh, just to make sure that the blue mat knew what it was like when it was really, really wet. And then as the soil dries out, you just keep dialing back your, uh, your blue mat. That's what I did. Uh, kind of stick your finger in the soil until you feel that it's at the right moisture and then you turn your blue mat back a little bit and it'll keep it right there. So, but the hardest part is that. So mother, mother tree Maine asked, uh, what Royal Kush it is in Maine. I don't know what that, uh, uh, well, Royal Kush is the line from, from Mandelbrot. So, yeah, I'm trying to understand the question. <laughs> but the royal spill is uh, from Emerald Mountain Lake. And that is the uh, triple X OG cross with royal seven cross with royal three. Got it. So Mother Tree Maine said, I'm in Maine and just tried a Royal Kush that really helped my condition. It was earthy and cushy. It was advertised from G13 Lab Seed Company on Weed Maps. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the great medicinal plant. Uh, Nick Risden, uh is highly familiar with it uh, and its effects for uh, his Lyme disease. Uh, he's been doing a lot of work with the Royal Kush lines and figuring out the terpenes and how they affect his uh, Lyme. He does have pretty much every co-infection, so he can um, tell which Royal uh, line is helping him kind of mellow out which effects. So big shout out to him doing all that work with, with the Mandelbrot genetics. Him and Josh, they're, uh, 
from regenerative seed company they're they're two awesome awesome guys so yeah okay well it's uh five o'clock i gotta go get valentine's dinner going all right peter thank you very much it was a pleasure yeah we'll we'll, we'll do the longer version later but uh yeah, uh, do you, do you, sorry, do you, uh, what's your Instagram? Uh, Cheddarbob13. Uh, so at C H E D D E R B O B. Two T's. T T. T T. Like, like, T T. Cheddarbob13. Yeah. What? What? So everybody, <laughs> like that. Weedstastegood.com, fermented plant extracts. Shout out to Miles. Uh, great guy. Medics are on point. You'll find him as well. Um, and I'm putting his uh, seeds up on the site. <laughs> oh, awesome. Now it's gonna now, now it's gonna be after dinner, but uh, it was gonna be right now. But uh, I, I got two up so far. We got some of the high CBD. Um, the uh what is up so far hold on miles which one do we have up uh some of the wolf stuff uh I got the cherry wolf yeah that's up i got the mccullum's magic fruitland mesa passion bubba amrit cookies and make cookies Damn. <laughs> All right. So, 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 so most of that two are up and the rest will be up uh, uh, by tomorrow morning. You know how many lobsters I had to catch to buy those? <laughs> it's a lot of lobster. A lot of lobster. All right. All right. All right. Everyone have a good one. Happy Valentine's Day. And... Uh, I will talk to you soon. All right. See you, everyone.